Hi, my name is Siddhartha Vatapardi. I'm a rising senior, and one thing I know is that I love learning physics through hands-on experiments. So, I decided to do Faraday's most famous experiment by shoving a magnet, like this kitchen magnet here, through a copper coil to induce current. So what I did was made my own coil as seen here and hooked it up to a galvanometer to measure the induced current when I drop a magnet through the loop. As you can see, the spindle did move, but only incrementally, so I cannot gather any quantitative data or deduce any relationship between the current induced or the speed of the magnet dropping. So does it triple when I double the speed? We don't know. Not one to be easily defeated, I decided to replicate the experiment with an oscilloscope. I chose the cheapest one I could afford, which was a $400 model. So when I play the experiment through, I get a very nice visual of the voltage versus time, however, the noise it produces is too much for me to make accurate measurements, and the oscilloscope doesn't provide me the instantaneous voltage data. Unfortunately, this will not allow me to deduce the relationship between the speed of the magnet and the voltage induced. Since I failed to replicate the experiment with existing devices, I decided I needed to engineer my own device to perform the experiment myself. To give Faraday's experiments an upgrade, I decided to use the most cutting-edge technology, the Arduino-based ESP8266 and the Raspberry Pi. Introducing the EMF meter, a device that can measure the voltage induced by a moving magnet to 0.01 millivolts and can publish the data to a browser on your local Wi-Fi. To get the voltage data from the coil, we first send it through a device called an analog to digital converter. This takes the voltage and converts it into a signal that's understandable for the main controller, the ESP8266. The entire circuit is contained on a PCB that I made using Eagle software, and the entire circuit is then placed inside the 3D printed case that I made using Autodesk Fusion 360. To communicate the voltage data to the browser, we first have to use MQTT, a wireless protocol, to send the data to the Raspberry Pi. Once the two devices are connected, you can then perform your experiment, as seen here, to then publish your data to a browser on a site called Node-RED, where you can see an instantaneous voltage versus time graph, as well as the minimum and maximum voltages over a given time interval. Now we have the magnet rotating at a constant speed of 1.7 revolutions per second. And by Faraday's law, because it's in a circle, the voltage generated should be in a perfect sinusoidal wave as seen on the screen. And because it's at a constant revolutions per second, the peak-to-peak -peak voltages should also be constant. As seen here, they don't change much from around 205 millivolts. So, assuming all other factors are constant in this setup, if we double the speed, we should also double the peak-to-peak -peak voltages. Now, we've doubled the RPS to approximately 3.5 RPS. And when we look at the peak voltages, those have also approximately doubled. Supporting that Faraday's law is true on a quantitative level. We can confirm more than just Faraday's law. We can also quantitatively test Biosavar's law. Faraday's law says that the voltage is proportional to the product of the velocity and the field. In this setup, Biosavar's law says that the field is inversely proportional to the cube distance between the coil and the magnet. However, since we're in a circular motion, the velocity is linearly proportional to the distance between the coil and magnet. Therefore, the voltage should be inversely proportional to the square of the distance. To find out, let's do a little test. Currently, the front of the coil is 5 centimeters away from the center of this magnet. And when we look at the peak voltages, we're getting approximately 200 millivolts. Now what we're going to do is double the distance and see what effect that has on the voltage. Now, the total distance is 10 centimeters away from the center of the magnet. And when we look at the peak voltages, we're getting approximately 50 millivolts, one-fourth of the original peak voltages that we had before. This precisely matches the predictions made by Faraday's law and Biosavar's law. 
As you can see, the EMF meter is very versatile in experiments for electromagnetism. On top of that, it's also open source. All the parts and instructions on its assembly can be found on my instructables, as seen below. Not only can you assemble the EMF meter on your own, you can also modify it to perform various other experiments that were not covered in this video. You can design it so that way you swing a pendulum with a magnet on it past the EMF meter. Or you can design it so that way it slides along a ramp, or make it move across a curved line. The limits are only your imagination with these experiments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to keep up to date as I'm planning to kickstart the EMF meter physics set and truly bring the laws of physics to life.